Entrepreneur's Podcast. Actor, performer, UFC veteran. And uh, when you said like performer, I liked the like, why did he put stunt performer? But uh, then I was like, oh, okay, you're just wide in the rage. Yeah, I can perform all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think performer because for different reasons. One, I don't consider myself a stunt performer. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. I'm an actor that can do his own stunts. Right. I'm very good at fighting. Um, sometimes you've got to say things the way it is. You know, I, I think I. <laughs> yeah. And modest, very modest as well. <laughs> but sometimes you got to say, we, we spoke about it earlier when yeah, we were yeah. in the car. Uh, today is not about how good you are, it's about how good you can sell yourself. Me too, I like Jackie Chan, I like Bruce Lee, but they didn't hit me the same way that yeah. Van Damme. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger looked like a freak. He was a freak. <laughs> Bruce Lee was a freak. Yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't relate to those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Van Damme looked like a regular guy. He was a geek who was bully, who speak French, who left, left some weight, went to Hollywood, was an extra, I made in, I can relate to that, I yeah, can yeah. understand. So I can understand that now some people want to be able to see people they can relate to. Sure, they can appreciate different actors and actresses from different backgrounds, but it's nice for people, and, and they might not get, want to get into um, acting, but at least they might be inspired by people that kind of look like them on screen mm, also. Mm, mm. So I think this is important but the problem is hollywood don't really know how to explain it well right. um but yeah so van damme was like okay cool that that's uh, maybe i can do movie too how old is he now it's like van damme, 65 like 60, yeah in his 60s yeah. yeah it's like 15 years different so when yeah. you saw him then it's like not that far like he wasn't that much older than you and yeah uh, yeah. yeah but yeah van damme we went over that obviously yeah um because very quickly I got bored of Van Damme movie, you know what I mean? After Deb and Impact and things like that, I thought it was kind of becoming a bit boring, you know what I mean? I, yeah. just, I kind of switched off of it, but it was a huge inspiration to make me think, well, if he can do it, I can do it. Obviously, Bruce Lee was more of a martial art aspect, even so he was more of an actor, but he already had this philosophy of cross-training in different martial arts, which at the time was a very big mm. no-no, people don't realize that. Also, he had this charisma, and same again, he was doing movie, he was doing real fighting, so there was a huge influence, and I think, Every single martial artist all around the world at one point got influenced by Bruce Lee, so that's, that's nothing new. Uh, in the acting world, obviously the first one was Jean-Paul Bemodo. Jean-Paul Bemodo was a bit like the king of cool in France. He mm -hmm. was kind of like James Dean uh, in a way. Um, he done films over multiple decades. He was part of the Nouvelle Vague, uh, which influenced New Hollywood. And then uh, he done action movie. And... His peculiarity is was doing his own stunts. He was generally doing stunts. Mm. He was doing from fighting to everything. He had a boxing background. He was doing some crazy things, standing in the subway in, uh, in Paris, going full speed and jumping around. And uh, it was so cool. And for me as a kid, because I didn't have this relationship with my father, this become in a way my imaginary father mm. for some reason. Yeah. You know, so for me, it was not only an actor and doing all those cool things, but I wish I had a dad like that. Yeah. You know, so it was a huge influence for me. And acting was obviously is Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman is such an amazing actor. And when I got more into acting, already I saw him in early movie, but when I really got into acting and learning about the craft and, and understanding what acting was all about, I was like, fucking hell, this guy is amazing. He transforms himself all the time. He changed his voice, the way he walks and everything. Thing of like it was such an inspiration for me yeah when he was playing um the minister um of united kingdom um uh yeah churchill yeah churchill that was insane i could not recognize him it was just uh, but that's something different so obviously he's got the makeup great yeah. movie by the way great movie i mean i watched it at the cinema i rewatched it um on on netflix uh, not so long ago it was like great movie that's another thing i should tell people you know sometimes we watch movies and the first time we watched it, it was like yeah Sometimes movie needs to be rewatched multiple times. And the more you watch them, The Irishman was one of those. The Irishman, I think like everybody else, we all expected kind of a high pace, good tempo coming from Scorsese. And it's a very, very slow pace. Yeah, very slow pace. And I was having a couple of drinks on the same time and I couldn't quite appreciate it. And I rewatched it maybe three, four, five times after yeah. that. I was like, this is such a fucking great movie. It you is know? pretty crazy. Same with uh, Miami Vice. I remember when I saw Miami Vice from Michael Mann. And I was like... That's not a Miami Vice, I remember. I love Michael Mann. Michael Mann is a great director. And then I rewatched the film over and over and over, and I was like, oh, okay, I see. Now, 
this movie now, when I watch it, I feel I'm there. I feel like in, I'm in Miami. I feel the heat. I feel the sweat of being in Miami. When they're having that conversation on the motorway with this guy and telling him that his wife just got killed and he's losing his shit. And I can feel the, the, the sound was so great of the motorway. And he's turning around to that truck like, and going over. I really feel like he's getting great movie. Mm. Yeah, it's incredible when those uh, movies can wake up these certain feelings in you. It's uh, and that's that's why I guess we we are in it. I mean, one thing what I struggle with is uh, with the, all the acting stuff, and always kind of struggled with the idea that um, we don't play ourselves. We have to be become something something else, and so there are thin authenticity. But in the same time, you do wake up certain things that are actually real for you. You know, like I've haven't done that much uh, acting training, but one. Uh, I love this example when um, I had to do this monologue and um, I did it in front of my coach and uh, this very like a tough uh, guy from New York, this black guy, um, <clears throat> our uh, coach, he's like, yeah, that's pretty decent. That's pretty decent, but let's try something else. Uh, and he was like, so what? He took me to the different room, set me on a chair and, and said like, pretending your hands are tied behind you. And that monologue, what I did was from um, um, American History X, uh, so there's uh, one of the monologues, this kid, basically, very shortly before he gets killed, like he kind of uh, talks about the feelings, what, what does it mean to be a bad guy, what does it mean to be this and that. And so I did this monologue, but uh, and so he basically would say, so now imagine that this is the last thing you say before you go on a death row, before you're in prison right now, and you're about to be killed, and this is the last thing you can say, fuck me. Like, I, t my delivery changed. I started sobbing. Snot was coming out from, like, because I was literally thinking about, like, how it would feel that this is the last thing I ever can say to my to my family, my friends who would be there on a, behind the glass, you know, before you get executed. And then he who really struggles with compliments, he got up and he was applauding. He said, that's the fuck what I'm talking about. And I mean, like, all I'm trying to say is, like, this acting is there's so many the pockets of, of ourselves we can bring out. And it's very interesting. The thing about acting is a lot of things I need to figure out myself. When you ask me about what book I read, I'm like, I don't really read that much. You know, as I said, I remember the first time I ever went to school, I cried my eyes out. I didn't want to go to school and I had something with school because I think my father used to beat me up and the only time I had with my mother is when he wasn't around. And now I would go from my father to prison, which was cool, back there even now when i go to school and i see those little hooks in the corridor when you're supposed to put the jacket it makes me feel like a chill in my back i mm. really hate it and i think i started from hd adhd and i couldn't really concentrate and stuff like that at the time they didn't know what it was and school was yeah. very much strict and it used to beat me up at school as well so it was it was a nightmare so i think i kind of blocked from that and they moved me from school to school because they didn't know what to do but by 13 i couldn't really write or, or read properly you know they put me at a very special school with people who were like not quite there. Kind of slow. And yeah. yeah, and the teacher was like, what are you doing here? And then you're perfectly fine. You know, I'm like, yeah, they don't know what to do with me. So reading for me is difficult. It needs to, right. And as I said, because also I suffer from ADHD, so it's very hard for me to, very quickly after 10 pages, my mind starts going somewhere else. Mm. So uh, for me, it, it's difficult. And, and because of that, uh, in my life, I always try to figure things out. Same with martial art. I would say that 80% of when I know in martial art, I figure it myself. It's not a teacher who said, okay, this is how you do this kick or this is how you do your submission. The best way for me to learn is to see other people doing it. Mm. And my brain clicked it, my brain, more than if you try to explain it to me. Right, 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 right. And acting is the same. I've done some classes, I've done some things, but I'm like, there's a difference between what you do at training and what you do on set. It's the same mm. with martial art. It's the difference between what you're going to do in the dojo and the way you're going to do it in fight. In fight, you need to make it work for yourself. Mm. You know? And what you're saying is fine. But I'm like, okay, but why would I cry when I'm going to go to death row? Maybe I don't want to cry. Maybe mm. I came with peace with what I did. Maybe I might not cry when I do it. Maybe I'm, I deserve to die. Mm. And, and, and then who am I speaking to? What reaction am I going to get in front of that person? Why am I crying? Am I crying because I want to get attention? I want you to feel sorry for me. Is it a redemption? Me, I need, I'm asking myself all those questions. This is why I'm one of these people who's, you know, when they say they're playing a role and they write all the story of them, them guy, mm. where he come from. Why is he like this? Is he poor? Was he rich? What is he trying to do? Why is he dressed that way? Is he trying to impress people? Or does it make me feel? 
I got all this information that I prepare, I prepare, I prepare, I prepare. And on the day I take all of this, I put it in the board, I put it in the bin. Yeah. And then I act and react to whatever people, but I need that preparation. For me, I don't think, I don't take a role thinking that way. I need mm. to create this for the camera. Or I did, no, no, all the preparation is done before. And that's why I like to talk to director. Who is this guy? What am I feeling about? Am, are we on the same page? Because on the day I'm going to make a decision on how I'm going to do things. And I'm not really one of those actors, which I can, but, oh, no, do it more like this or do it more like that. No, we, we need to be on the same mm. page here because we're going to shoot that shit in different sections. I might shoot the hand before the beginning, so I need to know the journey of my character. I can't just play however you want me to play on the day. Or play with a smile today. What the fuck am I going to give you that smile? Well, so I've got an option, but that's got nothing to do with what I did yesterday and what I'm going to do tomorrow. So now that shit don't make no sense. <laughs> so I understand what you want for you, but this is for me too. That's my fucking face on the camera. That's going to dictate if I'm going to get another job or not, if I'm going to keep my career. We're all in the same boat here, so we all need to agree mm. to what we're doing. I'm not just a fucking puppet. Now, I know I come across as a cunt and these people laying cameras and say, I'm not going to give this guy a job. It's too mm. difficult. And yeah, I am difficult. Mm. I am difficult. For me, it goes beyond that. For me, I'm playing a real person in that. I, I'm not playing me. I'm playing your version of me because, yeah, you are playing your version of me. I'm not pretending to smile a bit of a different way or hold my hand like that, which I, I can. But uh, when I, so re, even without doing that, you can smile and talk and do all those things like a normal way. But you might not make the same decision that that character is doing. Mm. Why is Thanos hit the spot on a lot of people? Because a lot of people, basically, inside they say everything the same way. It's like, yeah, you know what? If Alfred Planet would die, I won't fucking feel sorry for it. That's why you kind of understand where he's coming from. And that's why he make them people interested into that bad guy. A super evil bad guy. <laughs> evil for the sake of evil. What the fuck is that? I don't even understand what's going on. It doesn't feel like a normal guy. Do you know what I mean? Who's that evil? No. So everything needs to be based on some sort of reality. Mm. You know? And then when you got great skill, then you can start adding those slight movement slightly. But you do already work a different way when you start behaving a different way, you know? We all act in that life. When you go on a first date, you're going to act. That's not you. That's the best version of you. When you go for a job interview, that's not you. That's the best version of you. <laughs> but that's still you. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So we're all acting in our day-to-day -day life. We, you know, we, we just a little bit more, we less. Sometimes we realize, yeah. sometimes we don't realize. And, and I think now people got so many images coming from different social media and people can see bad acting a lot more quick than they used to. Mm. Look how many fake reactions you go online. People say, oh, the acting is so shit. Or people do fake prank. Now people see when it's yeah, a fake prank. Fake, yeah. People see. You know, they don't know anything about it. They would have not known 10 years ago, 15 years ago, because we weren't so aware. We won't see so many images. Mm. But even now, people are seeing people's eyes, people's reaction, and that's fake. Mm. So if they can see that, they're going to see when the camera is right here on you, mate. Mm. So you might as well just play something who's based on reality or it's based on who's this guy? Why is he acting or reacting that way? It's very weird to talk. It's very strange to talk about acting. It's such a... When people who don't understand it. It's, yeah, it's, well, it's, I could sense straight away like that you definitely know way more about acting than I do. But it was interesting when you said straight away, like, so why would I cry? Why would I, you know, if I'm going with peace when I yeah. die? Like, in my kind of head, it's like, well, I I enjoy to cry sometimes. I yeah. enjoy to, to like, kind of, uh, it's, a, it's a very amazing feeling of re re relief in, in a release. Like every time I watch some musicals, I cry. I yeah. watch Wicked or I watch a Greatest Showman, I'm crying. Yeah. And then when I talk, say to my girlfriend that I want to dump her, I don't cry. <laughs> so it's a different things, you know. But um, but that example, what I was giving to you, yeah, I was like, why would you cry? I would I ask that question. Maybe I go with a piece. Maybe I deserve to die. Like that's that's very interesting. Like I didn't even thought about looking from that perspective. Yeah, because I, just I used to I'm bring sad. I used to bring thing on myself. I remember one of the first film I did when I played one of the main roles was a film called Night Fair and we did some reshot and some of it is not even in the movie but when I'm having this um, argument with my wife and we're working in the street of Paris and I feel very and I would take things from my real life and I was frustrated. At the time I was going through some patch bad patch with my wife and I was very stressed and that's when I got my grey hair all of a sudden 
Um, and I would take some of my personal life, taking me and put it in here and, and act with it. And it was very deep, but fucking hell, it's exhausting. It's mm. very painful. It's very tiring. You can't do that every day. So I'm like, I need to find another way to act. And I can't just do that every time. I need to find mm. a different technique. And there is different technique in acting. And sometimes people say, oh, it's this way or that way. No, maybe you can mix some of them together. And sometimes you need to fake it because sometimes you got another guy that he doesn't understand none yeah. of this. He's not a real filmmaker. You know, he just wants you to smile for a smile like, fuck it and it's just smile <laughs> you know and it is what it is you know mm -hmm. so you are more a method actor you Maslow technique like what is the as I said I think I think people would say maybe it's method I don't think it's completely method but I kind of need to stay within that mood like let's say if we don't like each other I would rather not and we speak with each other I'm not that good. some people are that fucking good cut so anyway, blah, 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 <laughs> action. And it, it, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. You know, I like to cut. Okay. I'll go back. I'll get up. I'll do my thing. You know, yeah. I want to try to kind of keep that mood. You know? I, th I think I'm that guy. I'm like, I can be in one shot. Like, I'm going to fucking kill you right now. <laughs> and maybe, maybe it's a technique, but maybe also it's also a lack of technique. A lack of Could, complete I think that's my case. control. And I think that's my case too. <laughs> maybe sometimes it's an excuse, but I think it's a lack of complete control of your craft. Mm. But look, some of the best actors in the world, they are method actor and they stay within that role all the time or some sort of that role, you know, some sort of thing. Like mm. let's say you're going to do an accent in a movie. Try to keep the accent, you know, to come in on and off, on and off. You need to be fucking good. Yeah. So if you kind of stay within the accent, it's going to help you a lot more. Stay within that mood. Stay mm. within that thing. You know, as I said, I like to pick my clothes. I like, you know, and as I said, as you're picking your clothes, as you start thinking the way, you kind of start finding your character. You start working a different way. You start having a certain swag about it and yeah I'm enjoying this I'm transforming I'm playing me but not quite me mm. and it's kind of fun let's keep that rhythm blah 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 <laughs> Bruno's Podcast